Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus. So far what we've done is the color map. We have rust on the metal. We've uh, made the textures a little bit more interesting and unique. And now what we need to do is create a bump map. A bump map is going to help us define the look of this piece by making things rise and fall. So let's take a look at Photoshop. Bump maps actually work on grayscale. So the first thing we need to do is actually make it gray. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this color layer. Call it BMP for bump. I'm going to hide the color map and I'm going to add an adjustment layer. This is going to be a hue saturation and I'm going to grab this and desaturate it. Now a lot of people may think that that is the proper way of creating bump maps, but it's not. Uh, you have to really understand how this works. The border that is actually 50% gray that we created earlier is going to be a tool to help us. Anything brighter than this gray is going to rise and anything darker than this gray is going to sink. So let's hide the metal and let's start with the wood first. Now the question is, do we really want to see every crevice in our wood texture? I personally like to go ahead and hide everything and see what they look like so far. So let's Save as, this is going to be our bump, BMP. And let's plug it in Maya. So I'm gonna grab my bump map, click here, file. Click on this little output on the folder. There it is. It may look like nothing happened, but let's go to viewport two. And there we go. Wow, very dramatic. Uh, we definitely don't want to make it look like it's made of stone. Let's go ahead and calm the colors down in Photoshop. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, reduce the contrast dramatically, and sometimes we need two of these. I really just want to decrease the contrast. All right, let's see if that works. Let's save this, go back into Maya. We want to reload. So that's looking a little bit better, but you can see how dramatic it is. Now there's other places we can control the bump map, and that would be the bump depth. So for example, I can do 0.3, and you can see that now that's starting to look a little bit better. It's still a little too strong for me in my opinion. I'm gonna drop it down to 0.2, that's nicer. Let's go back into Photoshop. We can start bringing these elements back. Go ahead and save that. Go back into Maya and it's still pretty dramatic. Let's go ahead and render this out and see what it looks like. It's pretty, pretty strong. I might go in and just reduce it just a little bit more. Okay. So let's bring in the metal. Now the metal is actually already lighter, so that means it's going to rise. So let's see what it looks like. Let's save and reload. So you can see that it did a pretty good job, but I really want the metal to stick out a lot more. I, wanted, I want the metal to really come out. So I need it to be even brighter still. So I'm gonna go to my metal, open this up, and let's go ahead and go to our brightness and contrast and I'm going to increase my brightness. I noticed that it increases the brightness to everything, so I have to be very careful with that. To prevent that from happening, I'm gonna bring it above the metal layer, and I'm going to right click and then create a clipping mask. Now it's only going to affect the metal below. Now, as you can see, it also affects all the other layers. I just need the metal to rise. The drip is actually more like a stain, so it doesn't actually rise. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Let's find out how it looks like. So let's save, reload. Let's make it a little bit more dramatic by making the darker areas of the barrel sink a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to my wood over here. And same thing, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. I'm going to go to brightness contrast and actually reduce the brightness. Right, so I'm getting something very dramatic. Let's go ahead and save this and let's hop back into Maya and reload. Now it may not seem like a lot of happened, but remember the bump depth would really reduced it. So let's increase it to 0.5. And you can see that now it's starting to become a little bit more obvious, but we start getting all that noise back. So I need to actually have control over my textures. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna change this into a 50% neutral black. And then that way I can actually just give it a hint of gray. And even though it may not seem like there's a lot of information, Maya will be able to pick it up. So we'll reload. And okay, that's looking a lot better. This rust is a little too much. So let's go back into Photoshop and do something similar. I'm gonna duplicate this neutral gray and drag it all the way to the top to the metal. 
And that I can just kind of calm down a little bit more. Again, I just wanted to affect the metal. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I added it. So it already affected just the clipping mask. So that's good. So this is without that gray. This is with it. So I can maybe get a little bit more, save it. Okay, it's coming along. Okay, so the next part of the tutorial is actually to create specularity. Notice the glossiness of it. Right now it looks like it's covered in wax. We're actually going to control that. So I will see you in the next one.